Hey everybody, it's Susanna from Paper Craft Planet, and I had the pleasure today of coming to you um, in conjunction with our friends from Stampin' Up! to show you their new diagonal scoreboard that fits with their 12 by 12 score tool. So let's start by showing you. Here's the scoreboard. Um, it's pretty phenomenal. I've had the score pal for a long time, and I really enjoyed it, but as any of you who own the ScorePal know, as you, um, you have to learn to do a lot of math when you're doing something that's got a lot more increments in it. And this is one of those boards that has an increment every eighth of an inch, and that makes it very handy. It comes with a stylus, um, which some of the others will come with a very flimsy scoring tool that won't actually fit in the grooves. The stylus will fit right in the grooves and give you a nice crisp edge. And it'll snap right here so you don't lose it. Of course, I'm going to stick it on my messy desk. It's going to get lost anyway. Um, it comes with a drawer, and the drawer is intended to hold these um, pins. And they help you mark the places that you fold a lot so that you um, don't have to go back and refigure your place every time. And we're going to use that in just a minute, so that's very handy. Okay, this has been around for a little while. This is brand new. This is the diagonal score tool that comes that you can buy as an add-on accessory to the scoreboard. I do not sell Stampin' Up! products. Um, I will link um, to the Stampin' Up! website and I will also link, um, you know, maybe I'll put a post up where people who are Stampin' Up! demonstrators on the planet can um, list their names and then you can um, feel free to shop one of them. But it has rubber, this is a diagonal add-on piece that snaps right in here and um, and doesn't shift. It has these rubber feet on the bottom and a little arrow that shows you which way is up. Truthfully, it probably doesn't matter if you put it down versus up, but the arrow is supposed to go up. It's supposed to go right there. Probably made you dizzy flinging it around like that. All right, so here it is. Um, this is especially useful if you want to make your own custom envelopes. I love to do that. In fact, um, here's one that I made out of just copy paper that I printed a Stampin' Up! digital patterned paper on and then I went ahead and Photoshop and added some speech bubbles and I'll add that as a template in this blog post so if you want that you can have that. Um, the other thing you can do is make embossed backgrounds. I, I don't know if you can see this. Um, I'm going to try and come a little closer to the camera but I made a chevron with the diagonals and to do that, you know, all you have to do is come in, you know, let's say um, I'm going to come in approximately an inch, so I'll go from four to about the five mark, and then I'll just turn this paper, um, oh, actually what I did is I flipped the board and did the other way. So I did four, and then I did six to seven, and then I did eight to nine, and then I flipped the board, which you kind of have to hold it in place, so that the path went the other way, and then I would come back in at six and go six to four. And if you do that, you can you can get a nice chevron pattern. That's very fun, and to my knowledge, it's the only scoreboard that does that. So let's turn this back away; it doesn't shift. Um, what we're going to do today is make these quick little cards right here. Um, hopefully on camera the lattice background is going to show up, but what I did is I basically scored a crisscross grid on the back. It gives a really simple, elegant um, look to your cards. You don't have to buy any extra equipment. You don't have to buy an embossing folder and an embossing machine, and you get a nice little um, frame. So. I've already cut my card to size, and to do the scoring, all I'm going to do is I'm going to place it tight in my corner, and then I'm going to put my stylus against the edge, and I'm going to come across here, and I'm going to go about every half an inch. And you can see they're actually pretty tight together when you go on the diagonal, but it lets me go very fast every half an inch across to get an effect for my card. And then to come down this way, there's measurements along the far side. 
and I'm just stopping um, where I see the fold line in my card. If you go over the wrong place, you can um, take your bone folder, like here I went over just a little bit, just take your bone folder on the other side and just rub it out. It won't completely disappear, but it helps a lot. So you can see already I've got this nice diagonal um, score line going. And if you had um, coordinations cardstock that's got the white core on the colored cardstock, you could sand that and get a two-tone effect, and that'd be nice. Okay, I'm going to turn this to the side, and I'm just going to repeat the exact same score pattern, but in the opposite direction. And this time I turned my paper instead of the scoreboard so that it wouldn't slip. Turning the scoreboard really only works for the chevrons. And I'll tell you, they give you an awesome effect, but I didn't think I could do them quickly enough to make a good video out of it. So we're not going to we're not going to bother with that today. Maybe one of you other enterprising ladies will do that and link it up for me. Okay, so that is our entire card background with the raised edges. And to finish that off, I'm just going to take some um, um, Dim Stampin' Up! Dimensionals and put them on the back to give that a little bit of height. And I will add a button. And I will add my little just to note. And just so you know, um, just a little bit of insider information. This is called um, You're Just My Type. And this is from the Stampin' Up! Digital Downloads um, area on the Stampin' Up! website. I think you get a discount if you order from a demonstrator. But I paid for this. Stampin' Up! did not give it to me. I am. Um, I'm actually a big fan of their digital products because they put out current stamps as digital. So if you prefer to change the sizing or the colors or just work in digital, you can. And that makes this really nice because I could print off a bunch of these and make a series of cards and then just cut the circles out. Um, so this is just a thank you card that I made from there. And it coordinates with their current card stocks. So I have a lot more flexibility. Um, you know, then I did when people do this with old retired lines, I never understood. Um, okay, here's my just a note. Here's a couple of tricks on this. I used my square punch to cut the little pennant out, and then I just curled it around my bone folder so that it made kind of an S. And then I'll stick it down with a couple of glue dots and add my button. I'm not going to take time on camera to do that for you, but you can see here's what the finished product looks like. Okay, so now let's make an envelope. Here's what my envelope looks like printed. You can do this with any um, any patterned paper or cardstock. When you order your diagonal scoreboard, it's going to come with a sheet of directions like this that will tell you common envelope sizes and where to cut in order to make it um, work for you. I wanted um, to use coordinating papers for the just my type um, cards I was making. And I like to print, um, I like to make envelopes out of um, regular copy paper. So seven and three-eighths by seven and th or seven seven and three-quarters by seven and three-quarters is your finished square and um, once you get that you cut it out and here I have one cut out here through the magic of television and then you just take your score tool and you're gonna go um, at three and one-eighths and I put my tab here so I'll remember and I'm gonna score and I'm gonna flip my paper um, a quarter turn and I'm going to go at four and one eighth and I'm going to turn it again. Three and one eighth and I'm going to turn it again. Four and one eighth. Okay? And then, a little hard to see with this busy pattern. You know, I'm all squared up. All I have to do is fold my corners in. Whoops.
Okay? And then where these corners overlap, it's a little easier to see it on the opposite side, I'm going to snip those out so that they end up looking, you can kind of see on that, so that you get a nice clean fold. I won't glue that down for you, but what you basically do is fold all this over, you snip your edges out, sorry, I'm rushing, okay? Your finished product looks like this. And then some people snip this off. I actually fold it back inside. Um, I like the look of that a little bit better. And I think it adds a little bit of reinforcement to this edge. Um, a tip for you, add your um, adhesive to the inner flap. Don't try and add it along this long side. You'll end up um, misjudging and gluing your envelope closed. And you'll go too high and get it up here. So, just so you know, that's your tip. That's your tip. Okay. So now we've made some card. Now we've made a card, and we've made some matching envelopes. Uh, this is a really cute idea to um, make an envelope using Google Maps. Um, I did my friend's address and my address, and did the map this way. It really works better if your friend lives to the northeast of you. <laughs> but um, none of my friends live to the northeast. I did a whole bunch of envelopes. You can see what. A variety of patterns right there. Okay, so now let's make something to put our envelopes in. And what I thought we would make today is an easel box. And I know you've seen an easel card before, but we're going to make an easel box. And we're going to do it here live on television. Um, we're going to start with um, a drawer to put our cards in. And I'm going to post dimensions on the screen for you, but um, for the base of the box, you want to cut a sheet of paper that's eight by um, six and a half. And you're going to score one inch around every way. And where the lines cross, you're going to cut um, a notch out. You can just cut there and have a tab, but what I've discovered is you always need a little bit of wiggle room. So to get a nice finished edge, if you cut that little edge out, you'll get a nice clean score. So let's go ahead and put this together right now. And remember, we're going to put the tape on the outside of our tab. Because they're going to hide inside like this and give us a nice clean edge. Okay. Hopefully, I'm working on camera. Okay, so here's my drawer. I'm give it a little pinch so that it stays flush. If you want to, you could add a brad to serve as a drawer pull. But you'll see this is where our envelopes will fit, and they fit perfectly here. And, um, you know, our cards will fit there as well. So this makes a nice little tray for, our, for that. Okay, the next thing we're going to make is a belly band that's going to basically wrap around our box and provide a home for it so it'll slide out like that. Which is why you might want to add a ribbon pull or a brad or something on one side. You want to do that before it's too far assembled. So I'm going to get out my... Um, my score tape for this and I'm going to put the dimensions up on the screen for you. This one's a little bit tricky. I kind of had to rig it, but this is a 12 inch piece of the soft suede um, textured cardstock. And what I did is, I um, first of all, I've lost my scoring tool already. I told you I would do that because I won't put it back and look where it goes. Um, but I scored, here's four and a half. I scored one tick mark over from that. And then um, I scored an inch plus a tick mark. And that gives it a little bit of wiggle room so that drawer and those cards aren't in there too tight and your drawer will move easily. And then this is another four and a half inches plus a tick mark, another inch plus a tick mark. And then the overhang is what's going to um, provide an area for me to have my tape. I got really lucky that the measurements worked out perfectly. Um, but I'll put the exact measurements up on the screen so that you'll have them. So I expect you all to make this. Okay, my tape is apparently taped down to... Oh, come out with the tape. Here we go. Okay, so 
here's my two-sided tape. And get that down. Had a member give me a tip about um, when you're working with this two-sided tape, that if you'll give it a little burnish, you know, with your fingernail or your bone folder or whatever you have handy, um, it's easy to pull the liner back up and off. Okay. Now, let's see if I can get a nice, clean, straight match up here. There we go. And there's my belly band. And now, you can see my box will slide in this perfectly. And that's my little drawer. And um, we're ready for the next part. Now, true to the name, this is going to be an easel box. So the next thing we're going to create is a mechanism for this to be um, a card on top that pops up like this and is an easel. This is a really cute idea if we were doing this at the beginning of the year to have a um, calendar or, um, you know, maybe some pictures up here. But I'm just going to do a little, you know, generic note thing. And this whole mechanism is going to be attached right there. Okay, so um, here's my card base. And again, this is 12 inches. And I scored at six, and then I also scored at three. And the base, when we're ready, will get adhered to our shelf. Okay. Then I made basically a card front. This is um, six by four and a half. It's the same dimensions as the top of our box, um, minus a little room for matting. And what I'm going to do is I'm going to glue or tape this card front to this little three inch ledge like that. And you want to make sure that they stay together and that, um, and that you're, you're adhering to the bottom. This is the one time I give you permission, even though snail holds pretty well. Um, things that move I always think need a little bit of extra. So this is not the time to be miserly with your tape. And I'm going to line these edges up all the way to the bottom. I bought my son his first cell phone yesterday. So the beeping that you hear is him texting me. Absolute silliness because he's having so much fun playing with his phone. So here's the top of our mechanism. And now we need something that's going to make it stay down here at the bottom. And what I created for that is just a printout of the just a note that matches our cards, and I've popped it up on dimensionals. And I'll just adhere that right here. You can use brads, um, you can use just about anything, um, and you can make this as steep of an easel as you'd like, depending on you know what you have to put down here below. This might be a cute place to put you know a row of buttons or something like that, but. This is fine just the way it is. So let's peel our pop dot tops off. And match this up down here. Just a little bit of room. All right, that looks straight. OK, so that's what the top of our mechanism looks like. And this whole business is going to get adhered to the top of our box flat like this. Okay? And you can use glue or tape or whatever you'd like to use. And we will just match up the top edges. I managed to stick it to my fingers. Okay. Okay, I'm going to give it a little smush, make sure it's good. Okay, so here's our finished project. Um, in less than 10 minutes, we made an easel box full of note cards. Um, making these embossed note cards um, using the digital um, set, I made eight cards, and I want to say it took me, <laughs> once I came up with the design in my head, which took about three hours, um, making the cards took probably 20 minutes to make eight. 
and then we have some matching envelopes and that takes two minutes an envelope. It's silly, it's so fast, and the template is provided on this blog post. So there you go. I hope you enjoyed this. And again, um, the tool that we feature today is from Stampin' Up! And it's the diagonal score plate that fits on their, their score board, which is sold separately.